Hello, this is the advanced sewing and beading part of the amending video. Maybe you want your map to be a little bit more decorative. Maybe you wanna embellish it a little more. Here are some ideas. My friend Shing created a beautiful game called Amending. It's a solo keepsake game about a journey to visit a dear and distant friend. Thank you, Shing, for sponsoring this video. First, what I'm going to do is a lazy daisy stitch. Grab a pencil and gently mark your map. I have my map here. I'm going to mark my map with a gentle star shape. That's going to be the base for our lazy daisy. I've got some nice pink embroidery floss here and I'm just going to come up from the back of my map and take a stitch back into the map close to my last stitch, but I want to do its own independent stitch. Pull it through. I'm not going to pull this completely flush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up at the point of this leg here. You can barely see it on the screen, but I can see it. I've got this here and I'm going to come up through my hoop and pull it flush with the fabric. That's my first petal to my Lazy Daisy. I wanna make this look like a meadow. I'm pull that through. There is my first petal for my Lazy Daisy. Lazy Daisy stitch, you just keep going around and around just like that, coming up and through, going in next to that stitch, pulling it down. I've pulled my loop too small here. That's okay, because I can pull it back and then pull this through. So it's flush with the fabric and then keep going with your stitches just like this until you have a completed daisy. Go ahead and tie your lazy daisy off as normal. Let's make a more dimensional flower. Grab your pencil and let's draw spokes. We just want five spokes. Come to the middle. Go out to the edge, come to the middle. Now that you have all your spokes in, what you're gonna do is start weaving under, over, underneath and over all of these spikes. I'm gonna come up here. You will need a lot of embroidery floss for this. So if you run out, just stop and then um, get more. Under, over. I'm gonna go under this one and pull that through. I went under this one. So I'm gonna go over this one, under this one, moving my thread out of the way. I went under this one. So I'm gonna go over, under that one, over, under. You don't wanna to pull too tight here because you want to have a little bit of life in your flower. Under, now I go over, under, over, under, right? Going until you have a built up a flower and have enough stitches that it makes you happy. Um, this is totally up to you when you decide you are done, you are done. I'm done making my rose. I can come in here and I can pull on some individual petals here to make it stand up a little more, push out a little more, make it look a little bit more organic and fun. It's up to you. I'm gonna go, here's my thread. I'm gonna go to the back of the work and just tie it off. We are going to do French knots. They're super easy and they'll take up a lot of space. So I'm using my French knots to just make more rocks. I'm pulling my floss up through the back of the fabric. Now what I'm gonna do is wish I was an octopus. I'm going to hold my floss out to one side. I'm going to wrap my floss around my needle two times. I go towards myself, but it's up to you if you wanna to go towards and away. Now here comes the tricky part. You have to get that thread at the tip of your needle and go into the fabric. The tighter you pull, the tighter your knot will be. Pull that through. And there you 
have it. My best French knot yet. I had to practice twice. <laughs> so coming up from behind. Let's, t let's wrap it a little looser this time so you can see. I wish it was an octopus. Wrap around loosely this time, not super tight, and then bring that down to the fabric. Push the needle through. There we go. The trick with French knots is not to pull super tight and to also release expectations. <laughs> With the embroidery floss, it's not sacred. You can just cut it out and then start again. No big deal. Let's move on to beading, which is my personal favorite. It's gonna add a little sparkle to your map. Sewing on beads is super easy. Just grab the beads of your choice and stick them on in fun shapes. Coming up from the back of the fabric, I'm just gonna do a nice beaded star here. So I've got my bead. You can see I don't want it to be loose like that. I wanna bring this up. So it's super flush to my last stitch. I'm gonna take my stitch super close to the end of the bead. And pull that flush. Now, my bead won't shift around or um, lose its spacing. I'm just gonna come up over here. This is where I want my other side of my bead to be. Come up through the fabric, slide my bead onto the needle. Keep going till you have the desired shape that you want. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm quite particular to star shapes. I decided to work smarter not harder and come up from the middle so I don't have to think about how long my beads are. I'm gonna tie this off and then we're gonna do a bead row. Ooh. Let's say your path brings you to a river and you wanna denote a river fording with some blue beads. We'll come up from the back, just right here. And I'm gonna pick up three beads, carefully. <laughs> I'm using like the tiniest beads. I've got my three beads. I'm going to push them down the end. I'm going to take my first stitch by laying them down, seeing where that end is. I'm taking a stitch. Now what you're going to do is a little bit of back stitching. I'm going to come up and through just behind my last two beads. So that's, I could get a little closer up and through behind my last two beads. Do you see that? There, I'm gonna pull that through. Now I'm gonna go through those two beads. It's gonna make a straighter line. And as we stack our beads up, it'll look cleaner. Boop them down. So there's my extra beads that I just added. I'm going to come back Two. You can do one. I like to do two. Beading takes patience, just throwing it out there. I just think the effect is so nice. Okay, to finish this, I don't need a whole bunch more. I just need like two more. And take that stitch. Oops, it's a little tight. They kind of booped up like that. I'm gonna come back three and just really lay those flat. So they don't fight. I've forded the river. Oh, it'd be funny if I had gone like diagonal, like the river is pushing me. And then I'm gonna tie it off. And then our final bead trick is gonna be so easy. Grab a big bead that you wanna lay on the fabric. Again, let's do the mountaintop because that's always a place of power. So instead of just coming down and kind of wrapping the bead with thread, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a smaller bead and stitch it so the smaller bead is holding down the big bead. So I've got my small bead on, my big bead on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the hole. So I'm gonna move the small bead out of the way and I'm gonna go through the hole again. And that small bead is gonna act like a plug. I'm gonna plug everything up. There. Now I've got a nice little bead stack and that is secure and won't go anywhere. If you're super nervous about it popping off, you can totally go through the whole thing one more time. Thank you very much to Shing and Amending for sponsoring this video.